In uh, machinery condition monitoring, we come across uh, many defects, machine defects like unbalance, misalignment, bearing defects, gear defects, which we have discussed in some of the previous classes. Another important defect so called in machines is uh, looseness and rubs. So, in this class, uh, we are going to focus on uh, looseness and rub detection. What are the characteristics of uh, such uh, defects? and how through vibration analysis such defects can be distinguished. Well, uh, what is this looseness we are talking about? So, if you think of a machine, basically any machine has many such rotating shafts which are supported on bearings. Okay and this bearings uh, could be anti friction or general bearing and these shafts may be carrying a gear, a pulley, set of impellers. So, all these components could be there may be one of them could be there or all of them could be there. Okay, and this shaft is rotating. Now, obviously, if this was in a machine, this would be housed in a casing. This would be housed in a casing and so on. And perhaps near the location of the uh, of the bearing, we may be picking up a vibration signal. Okay, we may be picking up a virus and signal from a transducer. Now, it is this characteristics of the signal which you measure by putting a transducer near the bearing locations and from this how do we identify looseness is our objective. Just to recap, you know, as you know, in uh, machinery condition mounting, wherein we are using vibration analysis, the fact that vibration analysis is so powerful is for the fact that every defect has a characteristic. frequency in the vibration spectra and this is the most important fact for which for which this uh, vibration signature analysis is very very powerful, convenient, easy to implement in finding out faults in machines. So, we all know that for the fact that when we studied about bearing faults, we knew how the characteristic defect frequencies of bearings showed up in the spectra. We know about misalignments, how the axial components of the 2 x vibration frequency showed up more prominently than the others in gears how side bands occur around the tooth meshing frequency in you know you'll uh, talk about we'll uh, talk about fluid machineries particularly in fans blowers pumps turbines how the vein pass or the blade pass frequency shows up in the frequency spectra similarly the question is what happens because of looseness and then how do we detect that see as i am telling you here the characteristics of vibration signals due to looseness, there will be significant amplitude variation. These signals in the time domain would look truncated, I will explain one of them. They will be having certain harmonics and subharmonics, and then there could be 
a beating of the signals and unstable phase between signals. So we will see each one of them one by one. So, for example, if things are loose, what happens? The components would be flying around all the places, so they would be hitting against each other. So, there will be series of impacts, impacts or hits. So, if I look at the time domain signal of a normal signal, okay, this is something, something, this is normal thermal signal. So, what happens when there is an impact or a hit? You all know the characteristic signal of an hit is something like a impulse and we actually mathematically represent them with a direct delta function when we do the integration to find out the response. It is something like this time period tau and maybe amplitude is a by tau or something like that and this exists only for a short duration of time and this is the mathematical representation of an impact but this is what the real world signal looks like because of an impact and imagine such a signal such impacts are occurring on the time signal because of a looseness. So, what would happen is these amplitudes would go blow up okay, and so on. So, first of all these are high amplitudes. significant variations. Now, in vibration monitoring, you know that once we have the transducer, this is followed by a data acquisition system and in the data acquisition system, I will come to come back to this figure uh, later. In the transducer, I have a A to D system and then of course, we have the digital signal which goes to a computer and this is my transducer. There is a range of this A to D system and this could be maybe 10 volts okay, the maximum range you can have or plus minus 5 volts, but what happens if this transducers are of very wide dynamic range. It must have happened because of this impact, because there is no physical device which is controlling this amplitude. Okay. There is no, no, no limit to control him because if I have an impact because of a looseness, it is going to produce a high vibration signal okay. and this is limited by the dynamic range of the transducer. Okay. Sometimes it may go beyond the dynamic range, it may over range. So, there may be a case where I will over range, go beyond the capacity of the transducer. Okay. In, in such a case, what happens? these signals will be truncated because my A to D system will say understand this is plus 5 volt and this is say minus 5 volt. So, the A to D card will not try to understand anything beyond plus 5 or minus 5. So, my signal will look truncated I mean if I if I draw on the So, this is the, the red one is the truncated amplitude 
signal. So, such a signal will appear in the time domain where you are measuring because of the impacts or impulses which occur due to looseness. So, if I was to draw them again. So, these are signals which can very easily be seen on an oscilloscope. For example, my normal periodic stationary signal out of a machine could look something like this, but the truncated signal would So, these are the limits. So, what happened? They look like chopped signals or truncated signals. So, looking by the physical nature of the signal characteristics, of course, how do I you know in an automated system, it is not possible for anybody to look at a signal. So, we have to study the time domain features. By some of the time domain features, I meant RMS, mean, kurtosis, skewness, crest factor, etcetera. We studied about this in some of the earlier classes on uh, time domain signal analysis, and you know by now how to calculate this parameter. So, the characteristics of truncated signal would be different having a different kurtosis, skewness and crest factor and in the time domain they will look like truncated like I showed you in the earlier red uh, plots, this kind of plots I showed you here. This is how uh, these are the characteristics of the truncated time domain signals and they will look something very close to may be a square wave okay, and with some signals, with some oscillations and so on. So, if somebody was going to do an frequency diamond analysis of such signals and the normal method of doing such signal domain analysis, uh, frequency domain analysis is by the FFT process you will see a lot of this is your typical 1 x, 2 x, 3 x by 1 x I mean the normal rotational speed. And you will see again uh, one thing I should uh, drive home the point that in vibration monitoring it is essential that whenever we are doing vibration monitoring be it in the laboratory, be it in the field, it is very very important and implied that you are always measuring the rotational speed. Okay. It is a good practice many a times when you go to the industry you know people assume you know this machine is running at 1440 rpm or it is running at 2900 rpm etcetera. That is fine, that is what the motor rating says. Okay. If we have no idea, no uh, knowledge about the speed of the machine, that is good to follow. However, wherever possible try to install a rotating speed measuring device like a reluctance probe, like an optical tachometer like a laser based system. So, that any time whenever you are measuring the vibration you also have the corresponding rpm trace. This is of course, of course in a time domain signal rpm and how you will usually get a peak. some voltage, some voltage and this is your time period and the rotational speed F s or F r 
is equal to 1 by t. Okay. So, it is always good to measure of course, vibration and then the rotational speed, because once we have the rotational speed, you will get a good estimate of 1 x and then you will get 2 x, 3 x etcetera, but the characteristics of such signals in the frequency domain is that we will get harmonics through lot of fractional harmonics, okay, maybe 1 half x, 1 and half x, 2 and half x and so on and maybe even even fractional 1 third x, okay, 1 sixth x and so on. So, these are the because the see end of the day your this FFT analysis is being done by a computer. Okay. And this computer does not know whether your machine has a looseness or not. Okay. It is the signal which tells the computer once we analyze, we interpret that there is a looseness. So, this interpretation of the signal is only by a mathematical process. It is the signal analysis which gives us harmonics, harmonics and subharmonics. Okay. This is what is given by the computer, the harmonics and the subharmonics. So, as long as the signal looks something which will give us harmonics and subharmonics, we then interpret that there is a looseness in the system. Otherwise, this computer will not be able to tell whether it is looseness. So, that is where the signal analysis comes in the help. And again because this is looseness, you know, suddenly a component may get stuck, may not be though it may be loose momentarily it may get uh, frozen, it may get uh, jammed with some other another loose device. So, these signals are very erratic. You can say to some extent they are non stationary. And of course, because you know if the rattling looseness another mean word means uh, rattling. This rattling may be at frequencies which are close to each other. Okay. So, if frequencies are close, I will get what is known as the I will have beating occurring. Okay. And once beating occurs, you will have uh, amplitude modulation. Well, I will not have amplitude modulation, but the signals will look like amplitude modulation. Okay, and then because they are all independent process, you know, these uh, two frequencies which are rattling and close to each other will produce, and they are independent. They'll produce beats, and they will look like amplitude modulated signals. Okay. Now uh, we did not mention something about phase. See, phase is a very relative term. If I was to define phase, if this is my some signal x, so if this is pi by 2, okay, the first this is my reference. the first occurrence of a maximum amplitude from the reference plane and is the phase. Now, question is if I have many signals, okay, say another signal, there is also of course, a phase difference between I will I'll not draw another signal, maybe I, I will just okay, 
there is the phase difference may be of between the blue signal and and this is the phase difference phase is always relative. So, when I say, said here pi by 2 this blue one it is with reference to this plane, but between these two signals there is again a phase difference of pi by 2. So, in when you do signal analysis there is an unstable phase between signals. Now, what do you mean by unstable phase between signals? So, when I talk about two signals ok, when I talk about two signals x and y, how do I find out the phase of these two signals? So, what I can do is there is a process known as the cross spectrum phase. So, in an FFT analyzer, I can always find out the auto spectrum S x x which is nothing but. So, if this was signal was if I do an FFT of the signal x t, if I do an signal FFT, FFT I will get a signal which is in the frequency domain will have and similarly I will have y real in the frequency domain plus imaginary part of y imaginary in the frequency domain. So, S x x I will remove the f s here these are all in frequency domain and and this will be x r plus i x i times the conjugate and this will be x r square plus x i square. So, this is the auto spectrum of the signal x. Similarly, auto spectrum of signal y will be y square, but there is another component which is known as this cross spectrum between s x y f is nothing but x r plus i x i times y r minus i y i and you will see that this is a complex quantity ok and the this will have I will, I will not go into the details of this. So, this will have a real part of S x y f plus imaginary part S x y f and so on. So, the magnitude will be nothing of the cross spectrum this is the this is the auto spectrum. this is the auto spectrum. In other words, this is the power spectrum if we look the unit has squared and this is the cross spectrum. The reason I am telling you this is this is how in the FFT analyzers the phase between few signals are calculated. So, the phase between signal x and y phi so x or uh, phi of phi of the cross spectrum x x y f is nothing but tan inverse imaginary of s x y f by the real part of s x y f and uh, from this equation you know, if you multiply them you can find out the real and imaginary. So, this phase angle which is a function of frequency this phase angle which is the frequent uh, function of frequency 
will actually vary with time and this will be from plus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 okay. and then this will be varying and this variation for a stationary signal and this depends on so how many resonances occur and this is fluctuating. And usually for usually for stationary signals when we in, in signal processing the random error in measurements is actually reduced by signal averaging. So, what I mean to say is suppose I am finding out the transfer function by the way the transfer function between this two signal h x y f is nothing but the auto spectrum sorry okay and this is again a complex quantity and these are all functions of frequency you have to be careful about how you put the uh, conjugates okay and then uh, this magnitude will look something like this okay and with averaging there will be a lot of such noises which will reduce noise reduces by signal averaging. Now, similarly for this if you look at the phase, phase also is pretty nicely defined, phase of the transfer function. However, when you do such analysis between two signals which are coming from a machine where there is a lot of looseness, you will see that this phase there will be a lot of it will make, make no sense because if you do an average signal you will not get any meaningful information and that is what I mean by unstable phase between signals. So, these are clear indications that a system has looseness. So, through signal looking at the signal in the time domain I will see very very high amplitudes overloads occurring repeatedly overloads occurring though you do what is known as an uh, auto ranging etcetera. But if you look at the signals in the time domain their features their features may be very high the mean the RMS values will be high. But again in the frequency domain a uh, very easy way to find out such defects is the occurrence of uh, harmonics, subharmonics and the reason behind harmonics and subharmonics is because of the fact that the signals almost look like square waves, they are truncated, they are clipped okay. and then because if things are rattling moving around there will be a lot of beating occurring and then there will be unstable phase between signals because the signals are have no constant basis of generation in the time domain. I mean in one instance one uh, vibration signal is coming out another instance another vibration signal is coming out because an impact has occurred. So, they all give us to a signal which has lost its stationarity is another definition by which you can also find out looseness. Now, once you have all the techniques of uh, non stationary signal analysis 
comes. Non stationary signal analysis can be done to detect such defects. Okay. And what are the non stationary signal analysis? We will go to them. I will, I will before that I will uh, before uh, coming to rub I will I will conclude this in the sense in the non stationary signal analysis we can do what is known as the, the STFT I can do what is known as the wavelets okay and th these are the th two important techniques uh, which can be used to find out looseness though in this course I will not go into the details being the very basic course on STFT and wavelets. I will uh, not go into the details of this, but however, if you want to know more about this, you can uh, refer to my website, iitnoise.com or you can contact me over my mobile or you can also email me. These are my contact details. If you want to know more about these uh, non stationary signal analysis, STFT and wavelets. But this is not in the domain of this course. However, this being in the web, if anybody is interested to know about more about non stationary signal analysis, they can contact me at this website or through my mobile or email. Now, another very important uh, uh, characteristics of this looseness signals is that they will be associated with noise, okay. because things are hitting against each other. So, there will be impact noise okay. and this noise can again be captured by uh, a certain process which are told as the SPL, but nowadays techniques of acoustical holography are available by which the sound field can be detected. Say, for example, I have a machine. Okay. And there has been some defect inside, so it is radiating noise. So, what I can do? I can bring about another plane around it. I can do the noise measurement okay. either through an array of microphones. And mind you, these microphones are located at every grid location, and they can we can do a spatial transformation of the sound field by using such an acoustical holography technique. And if there are defects in the uh, machine, okay, and then the noise will be uh, removed, okay, then the noise can be of a very, very high level and if I look at the sound field, okay, for every frequency I can get some maps, special, special noise map. Okay. And because these are non stationary, these maps are going to change, these maps are going to change. Okay. And this is an uh, advanced fault 
detection technique. which is being used to know from the sound field what is the noise which is uh, getting generated okay and uh, we can then detect looseness in a system but sometimes we purposefully have things made loose. For example, a rolling element bearing. Okay, there is a cage or a retainer which sits on the between the races. These retainers are actually riveted. However, they are free to rotate, but the purpose of the retainer is to ensure no to rolling elements come in contact okay but then they are loosely rotating if the soft is rotating they will be spinning at their frequencies and we will we will come to each other if this retain, uh, retainers were not there or the cage known as the cage or the retainer If this cage or retainer was not present, what would happen is these two rolling, uh, rolling elements would come and contact with each other and that happens when if there are two balls spinning at high speeds you know, and come in contact with each other, there will be a lot of wear, they will get deformed okay, and then they will be not perfectly round and then they will have uh, more friction and then more noise more vibration so and that is what we are coming to the next topic about rubs okay and if these things are rotating so we should avoid and coming back to this rubs so in a machinery if anything is contacting each other rotating devices are contacting each other they will rub against each other so rubs will occur and I just told you the case of a rolling element bearing, where if the cage or retainer shown in red was not present, these two rolling elements when they were spinning and rotating they would come to and touch each other and then there will be severe wear because of Herzian contact. Because of Herzian contact stresses would be developed and again again the same phenomena will occur they will be because of this excessive forces load there will be high stress there will be wear increased friction and then there will be of course, noise kind of a streaking noise So, this would happen ok and and they will be speed dependent this kind of happens ok. So, we should avoid this rubs to be occurring and then I will uh, while I are talking about rubs I will also tell you when I talked about machines many a times 
this loosenesses will also introduce the two parts either rotating or sliding or stationary come in contact with each other. Okay. And these machines are usually usually uh, I am not drawing the other side which is hidden usually are having a foundation. So, because of this foundation being loose, we call this as a soft foot, soft foot. Now, soft foot can be very easily determined by what is known as an coherence analysis, coherence analysis. Okay. And how this is done is suppose I will just name them 1, 2, 3 and suppose I have another transducer at location 4. So, what I will do between transducers 4 and 1, 4 and 2, 4 and 3, I will find out what is known as the coherence function. And how does how is this coherence function between any two signals x and y denoted as? So, gamma x y is nothing but s x y by s x x times s y y okay and this is actually denoted by a square because of the square term and the value of this is 0 x y square less than equal to 1 and this is known as the coherence function. So, the value of this is in frequency domain less than 1. So, when I measured in this case, when I measured the coherence, okay, you will see this may be if this is loose. So, for example, this loose number 3 is loose or having a soft foot. This could be of the order of maybe you know whatever is the 1 2 4 1 2 of maybe 5 6 6 and you will see that the vibrations at 3 is no way related at 4 because they are not connected to the system okay, because it loses it this could be very very low. So, this gives us an indication that something is wrong with this machine this foot and then it is not producing a coherent signal at 3 at 4 is not because of 3. So, this says uh, coherence function actually relates one signal to another and just by measuring you can measure them simultaneously or you can measure them by a dual channel signal analysis one at a time you know like suppose your x is 4 y could be once 1, once 2, once 3 and then you could be doing this computation. Of course, the modern FFT analyzers have these functions built in. So, you can measure the coherence and if there is a soft foot the coherence would be poor in the given frequency domain. So, this is another way such coherences can be detected and then and in fact, coherence also has a very important application in experimental model analysis. Because if I have a system, mechanical system or a machine, 
suppose I am getting some output y which is the response because of some input x is the excitation and to know whether this system I can measure gamma x and if this value is I know mostly that the response is because of the excitation and those of you who know uh, signal processing or vibrations you know this will be the resonance because that resonance you require very very less force to excite and uh, to get a response so, that is why there are dips in the coherence function. So, this means that the response y is only because of x if I have a good coherence okay. and this is actually very much used in experimental model analysis. I will not go into this uh, in detail, but coming back to the phenomena of rub because this looseness creates rub. So, the characteristics of this rub is once for per revolution contact for example, blades with casings and rub has a lot of determinal effects. For example, if you think of the turbine of an aircraft the compressor which, which looks like this in the outside of blades I will not I will not draw the entire the set of blades ok and so on and this is the rotor casing or the compressor casing. and these are the sets of blades. Imagine because of a misalignment this touches this edges touches this casing. So, if there is a rub there will be fatigue failure there could be high heat generation. So, do, though the tolerances are very very close you know may be less than 1 centimeter in a in a in a gas turbine engine of maybe 2 meter diameter this could be about 2 meter diameter and then this clearance is even less than 1 centimeter and these things rotate at uh, may, maybe 30,000 rpm. So, you can imagine the serious consequence they will have if the uh, blades touch either and so this rubs are to be avoided and this could be because of my bearings which are supporting the long shaft because in, in an aircraft engine the series of okay, blades the low pressure compressor the high pressure compressor etcetera the combustion and then the turbines. Okay. Of course, which works on the principle of the Brayton cycle, particularly the gas turbines. So, I will have air flowing in okay. and then uh, combustion and the exhaust gas and that gives the thrust, but imagine if these casings touch against each other. So, we should avoid you maybe in, in the class, class of turbines I will show you a picture of how this uh, compressor blades look like and how close they are. So, this has to be taken care of. Now, some of this because this looseness and rubs uh, the are inter interrelated how do you detect this uh, looseness. Many times in many systems what happens there are series of belts okay, and then there will be series of pulleys and there will be belts going all over the system. And they are all rotating 
in a particular direction with a linear speed. So, if the belt was not slipping or if the pulley was not loose, what would happen? The relative speed between them is 0. Okay. And this can be very easily detected by a what is known as if you flash a strobe light by a stroboscope. So, basically you flash at a frequency okay, which is equal to the rotational speed. So, the belt would look to be stationary on the pulley ok. So, I have exaggerated this gap. So, between this the belt would look stationary and such can be used to detect uh, looseness. If, if they were not stationary, this would gradually look to be sliding on the stroboscopic image. I mean um, those of you who have uh, particular the engine fan belt, if it is slipping over the pulley, you know they, they shoot a strobe light onto the engine fan belt and kind of find out this kind of things. So, this analysis of impact and rub vibration signals which are created because of uh, the uh, looseness are non stationary in nature and conventional FFT is not appropriate. Non stationary signal analysis like STFT or wavelets need to be used. And another important thing we have to keep in mind that usually because of a rub which has occurred because of a loose signal uh, sorry because of a loose component they will manifest as a vibration excessive vibrations and because this 1 x etcetera will be high, people many a times misunderstand them as unbalanced and misalignment. So, we have to be careful against that while measuring such rubs because of loose components in a machinery. So, associated problems like I told you soft foot belt looseness and uh, bearing damages may occur if, if this loose components go undetected they will give excessive forces onto the bearings and then there will be problem okay, uh, bearings will eventually get damaged. So, one lead to other and that is the most important thing in uh, condition monitoring if you are not careful the very first time you may you know, the disease may develop into more severe disease and it will be difficult for somebody to diagnose. Okay. Thank you.